Oh man, we have a lot to kind of cover here, so I'll try to do this quickly, but this should be just a quick coverage of the recent war that I went to here. They do one of these every single month. It is an absolute blast, but also some of the stuff that's coming up. I know a lot of the stuff that I've been working on behind the scenes. Usually I'm just like, hey, look what I got, but maybe I'll give you a quick pick of what's out and what we have coming. So first things first is the latest war that I went to. Man, there was probably like 70 people there. I don't even know. There was a lot and it was slightly hot out, but I like how the community kind of, you know, picks up and kind of gathers together. We had some people bringing waters and chips and ice cream sandwiches. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, but this war was a little bit different. So I was actually able to meet uh, some of the YouTube content creators that I've been watching forever. So of course, Captain X, he's the one who put this one on. Again, he does an awesome job. And then of course, I got to meet Walcom S7. I talked to him and Luchador, which was super, super cool. They let me see their pew pews. And I was like, oh, those little blasters. I'm like, those blasters are friggin' awesome. Um, I definitely want to get one of those one day. But I also got to meet uh, Dr. Flux, which is very awesome. We sat and talked for probably 10 to 15 minutes. Very cool dude. He got a lot of stuff um, coming down the pipeline. I know most of you guys have already heard of him, if not everybody. But if you haven't, go check out his channel. He got some really, really cool stuff. But definitely a cool dude and cannot wait to talk to him more and play games but uh, with him more. But that was definitely awesome. Um, we did release our, um, our Nightingale kits. So if you guys haven't already, we did do a big video on that. So you guys can go check out the full kind of review on this. But I wanted to put these on to the Nightingales because the kids seem to love these things. And I wanted to stress test it. I wanted to go out and play with it like normal to see if it can, you know, see how it holds up. And they held up phenomenally well. These were They were dropping them and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So check those out. Um, yes, we do have this version where you're going to have the kind of the kit and you can put on a different type of suppressor. I ran this just to check to see how it is and it seemed to be fun. So... This should come out here hopefully soon. Um, but yeah, that's some of the so stuff that I stress tested. I did also stress test some of the um, uh, some of the Griffins here by Flygonial. I wanted to make sure they're you know they're up to snuff. You know if we start selling these things, and they sure did super great. We did have a motor burnout, but hey, that's not the blaster. It's just what it is. But the other three that I had, I mean, they shot a lot. So more coming on that. Um, also the war, you know, a few people asked me, they're like, hey, are you going to bring the Tomcat? And I didn't bring the Tomcat. And the reason is because the Tomcat shoots about 175, 180. I mean, it's up there, just stock. And you cannot easily get to the spring. This has that back cap and you can't open it up. So you have to open up the whole thing. And I just didn't have time to go in there and modify it um, before I went to the war. So I didn't even want to bring it and accidentally have someone pick it up and go on the field and go play with it. So this will definitely get modified and we will talk about it more later on. But some of the standouts, man, I like to talk about some of the standouts during my wars because I get a lot of the different blasters are able to be used and people can play with them and kind of see, you know, kind of how they hold up in a real nerf battle scenario. And one of the new ones is going to be the Dictator. So I thought I would really like the Dictator. It is decently nice. It's a, a cool looking blaster, but I still found the loading back here to be just kind of cumbersome. You know, I know how to load it, but if you give it to a kid or someone who doesn't know, sometimes they put in the mags backwards and they're more fumbling with it than I actually see them, you know, kind of shooting it. But it still was a, a cool factor. They looked at it and they're like, oh man, that thing looks, you know, just awesome. So I don't know, maybe in the future it might be a bigger hit, but it wasn't as a big hit as I thought. The Nightingales were still, again, these are just, man, these are like the number one things. I have a lot of different kids and adults saying, hey, can I come up and use that? I'm 100%. I always say, look, if you take it and you take, leave with five mags, bring me back five mags filled up, right? Don't just take five mags, dump it, and then come back. So these are always an absolute hit, uh, easy for all ages and even experienced players to use. The big one for me is, of course, my Worker Phoenix 2.0. Um, I know I use an MK3 a little bit, but... I mean, really, if I want to go out and shoot well, I'm going to use the 2.0 with the MOSFET. Now, I do have it on two-round burst, which is freaking awesome. If you guys have never experienced that, the two-round burst out of these is sweet. Now, I do have my suppressor on here. Now, again, it doesn't muffle the sound or anything like that, but these are the same suppressors here that we sell. Well, maybe this one's a little bit different. This is actually a prototype, but you can get you know the stock ones here. I've been doing a lot of stuff on the inside of these to chamfer different edges, do different things so that when the dart comes out, you know, the uh, the kind of pressure on both sides is alleviated. So when the dart comes out, 
it's a little bit straighter of a trajectory, but I don't know. It's just stuff that I'm working with. It sure seemed to help. I mean, this thing was an absolute just beast on the field. Now I did get uh, basically rushed right here. You can check it out again, Isaac. I already gave you props for it, but you know, I couldn't, I just couldn't get him. He came up and just jump shot at me, but still uh, I am working on this. If uh, you know, you can hear in the video sometimes, you could see, you can hear it. It sounds different when you shoot this thing. You're like, what is he shooting? It's because the tip I have up here is a little bit different, but I'm just mixing and matching, trying to find the best way to get really tighter groupings. Instead of having a scar, you can alleviate some of that pressure on the sides and just have it kind of go out in a little bit straighter of a trajectory. So this is an absolute standout, but um, yeah, I mean, I had a blast with the wars. I gave a ton of stuff away. We hid a lot of these things right here. So these are just like little 3D printed things before I did, um, I hid egg, Easter eggs. But on these, I actually hid these little guys right here. And they're, I don't tiny about it, inch and a half, I don't know, something like that. We hid them all over the field and we would put them out after they found. And if you find them, of course you can win a prize. And so you'd roll a 20 sided die and based upon the 20 sided die. So again, I'm just kind of rotating through here. We gave away some crazy stuff, some absolute crazy stuff. Now I can't always give away the biggest, bestest, coolest things, but the stuff that I have that I don't use, by all means, I wanna let other people use it and enjoy it. I don't need it sitting on my shelf for you know, a year and a half. It doesn't make any sense. So again, all those prizes, uh, congrats to all the winners here. You guys absolutely rock and you guys absolutely deserve everything that you guys find. But we'll see what we give away next time. I really want my crossbow to be done. We're very, very close. Uh, again, the XFBs are always a huge hit uh, at these things. Again, there are just, you know, super nice kind of little fun little blasters to kind of plink around with. But overall, I mean, it was again, another great meetup. A um, lot of great folks meeting, you know, again, Walcom and Luch and I think the Silver Fox industry folks were there. I unfortunately I didn't have time to say hi to them. Um, but Dr. Flex, again, meeting all these people, I think is just awesome. People that you watch, uh, you know, here on YouTube, you're like, oh my gosh, that's them like in real life. And it's, I mean, they're the same. Like for me, they're the same as you would watch. You would think that the personality on YouTube would be different than in person, but they're just the same nice individuals. And that's what I really like, um, you know, about this hobby is, is people are just really, really friendly and just caring people. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know, I wanted to make this kind of quick. I want to do a quick recap. Now I will leave a link in the description. If you guys do want to watch some gameplay, I'll leave it down in the description. I usually don't publicly post those, but you know, I'm going to put them down in the description in case people watch this and they get this far in the video and say, I want to watch some of the stuff that you guys do, but I will definitely put it down there. But still, that is my overview. Again, I can't stress it enough about all the people who won the prizes, man. You guys rock. Every single one of you guys rock. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks again, Fox fans.